For the regular meeting of the Mishawak County Council for October 8, 2018, please come to order. Please place all electronic devices on mute. Remove your hats and please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Volker? Here. Mr. Compton? Here. Mr. Tanner? Here. Mr. Deal? Here. Mr. Benicki? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Belovich? Mr. Kanarecki? Here. Mr. Mamalenti? Here. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting September 17, 2018. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, they'll stand approved as received from the clerk's office. Petitions, communications, remonstrance, and memorandums. Yes, Mr. Mr. President, we have petition number 2018-24 to the honorable members of the County Council, City of Mishawaka, Indiana. This is a petition to rezone from I-1 Heavy Industrial to R-1 Single Family, Family 2051 East to LaSalle. This is for Heather Coleman. Petition number 2018-24. Twenty-five to the Honorable Members of the County Council, City of Mishawaka, Indiana, petition to rezone, to rezone from Seymour General Commercial to Arlen Single Family Residential, 418 East Mishawaka Avenue. This is signed by Jack and Amanda Thorman. Petition number 2018-27 to the Honorable Members of the County Council, City of Mishawaka, Indiana, petition for vacation of public right of way. This is a vacation of public driveway for a portion of Madison and Pine Streets for Center for Hospice and Palliative Care. This is signed by the Foundation of the, for the Center of Hospice and Palliative Care and Robert and Patricia Geller. Petition 2018-28 <coughs> to the honorable members of the County Council of the City of Mishawaka, Indiana, regarding petition for rezone. This is for rezone 209 North Cedar and 602, 608, and 612 Madison Street from R1 Single Family Residential to C3 City Center Commercial. This is how signed by the Foundation for the Center for Hospice and Palliative Care and the City of Mishawaka Redevelopment Department. Thank you. Of course, the special committees, seeing none. Ordinances on first reading, also none. Resolutions? Seeing none. Ordinances on second reading. Proposed ordinance number 2018-19 and ordinance annexing contiguous territory to the city of Mishawaka, Indiana, providing zoning classification therefore. This is to annex the rear 181.58 of 55946 Clover Road and rear 90.75 of 1828 East McKinley Avenue rezoning the rear of 55946 Clover Road and 1828 McKinley Avenue to I-1 Light Industrial. This is a public hearing this evening with no vote. Thank you very much. May I have a committee report, please? You will have a committee report. Yes. Yeah, this is second reading of proposed ordinance 2018-19. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this proposed ordinance, please come forward, state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, my name is Terry Lang, Lang being an associate. Our address is 715 South Michigan Street, South Bend. I represent the petitioner in this case. Um, uh, Post Assemblies, uh, which has the property immediately to the uh, east of this property, um, is looking to expand. They've purchased the adjacent properties, which is this petition here before you, and are looking to annex it into the city to allow them to put buildings on the property that's being annexed in, to allow them. They are currently uh, leasing property in Edwardsburg and are looking to kind of keep it all in the city of Mishawaka and to uh, make logistics a whole lot easier uh, for that. So the petition before you is for that uh, annexation and zoning to allow them to uh, expand the location where they're at. 
questions for Ms. Thank you very much. Anyone else wish to speak in favor of the proposed ordinance 2018-19? Anyone wish to speak in opposition to this proposed ordinance 2018-19? Are there any council members wishing to speak? Let's close this public hearing. Proposed ordinance number 2018-20. An ordinance of the city of Mishawaka authorizing the issuance of waterworks revenue bonds for the purpose of providing funds to pay the cost of certain additions extensions and improvements to the municipal water groups of said city, providing for safeguarding of the interests of the owners of said bonds, other matters connected therewith, including the issuance of notes in anticipation of bonds and repealing ordinances inconsistent herewith. Thank you. Have the committee report, please. Yes, Mr. President, your committee on budget and finance to whom was referred the matter of proposed ordinance number 2018-20 that they have examined said the matter and that in their opinion it should be adopted. This is signed by a majority of the committee and I move for its acceptance. Second. All those in favor of the committee report say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. This is the second read on proposed ordinance 2018-20. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this proposed ordinance please come forward and state your name and address for the record please. Yes, Dave Majeski, Manager of Mishawaka Utilities Water Division, 10577 Apple Tree Lane, Seal. This project is a win-win for the citizens of Mishawaka. Um, will not only give us redundancy on the south side of town, something we currently don't have in one single feed in the south side of town. The new booster station as part of this project will give us an additional feed for the south side of town. The new um, booster um, and the tank in conjunction with each other will give us, give us two million gallons of additional storage. The new tank will allow us to take the three million gallon, gallon tank currently line, online offline to rehab that tank and then we'll have five million gallons of storage on our trail. So that'll give us greater redundancy not only on the south side but in the central pressure district and in fact all of Mishawaka. So that's a win-win that is helping all the citizens of Mishawaka. Also, as part of this project, the 8,000 foot water main, we have to run water main on Iron Trail, Iron Road, back to get it hooked up to the tank, up by the Meyer store, and that'll give us that second fee to give us that redundancy on the south side of town. Um, also included in this is the design for the new treatment plant and well field at Judy Creek, and that'll take us to the final design up to the point where we're ready to build the treatment plant, plant up at Judy Creek. Any financial questions? I also have Alex Hilt from Humble and Associates with me. If there are any questions for me, we have any Any questions for Mr. Yes, go ahead. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the water tank that's being proposed up on the hill, um, is that a property owned by the city? Yes, it is. It is our property. Yes. So there's no need to annex any property or displace anybody at this time? No, no, sir. Okay. Thank you. And also, I might add, too, this is there's no new rate increase as part of this also. Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, for the sake of clarity, can you remind us how old the current tank? The current tank is nine, no, it's gonna have its 90th birthday next year. <coughs> so uh, when uh, that goes offline, it'll give us, it'll give us a chance to get inside and check the structural integrity and, and do the reset at that point. So yes, 90 years old. I think in the past you've mentioned we had, we've had an opportunity to peek in there. Are there any concerns that we would end up encountering big capital expenses once we really get a, a chance to look in there? From what we've seen, no. Um, we had some ROV cameras in the tank, and uh, it's hard to see because you, you stir things up and sometimes things get a little blurry underwater with the sediment, but uh, we have not seen anything that leads us to believe there's serious structural damage. Great, thank you. Yes, Ms. Wolf. Thank you, Mr. President. Just, um, how long do you expect the uh, construction to take for the new tank? Approximately one year. Hopefully, if the weather and everything holds out well, um, we hope to close on the loan and start digging. Hopefully, by the first of November, having a good winter, we should be hopefully online by late next fall. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kent. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Majeski, you said that uh, this brings you up to the point of the 
uh, new water treatment facility at Judy Creek, but not inclusive of that facility. No, not inclusive. That would be a separate population. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Evans. Uh, taking off on Mrs. Volker's thing, you said one year to build a new one. What about rehabbing the old one? That would be as soon as that, as soon as that, the, uh, the new tank is online and we're satisfied everything's working properly, we'll drain the other tank and then the engineers can get inside, take a look at it, see what's exactly needed. So that'll be on a fast track. Hopefully we can have something within a few months and by the following spring, summer, we're uh, in that tank or in the rehab. About a year. Probably about, probably, 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 I would say everything good, everything good happens, probably three million gallons or more. Thank you. No. Uh, okay, Dave, just for uh, uh, clar clarification, this doesn't include the, the Judy Creek project, but the the rate structure that we looked at projected out over uh, five years or whatever it was, that does include the project. That includes the Judy Creek so, project. So that will not uh, cause any additional rate increases outside of what we've already looked at. No, no, yes. okay. that is correct. No, no further increases. And correct me if I'm wrong. But and just a quick question, kind of follow up, Mr. Kanarekis. Is there a possibility, even though it may be small, that once we get in there and examine that old tank, that it may have to be decommissioned? I, I, I don't think so. I, I think um, we haven't seen any leaks or any, we haven't had any signs of that. The big part is just our whole system is predicated off that three million gallon tank. And we just can't get in there. If we drain the tank, we really have no way of controlling our system. So this will be a, a good way we'll be able to rotate the tanks and clean. So we haven't seen anything that'll point toward there being any serious structural deficiencies. I mean, all things being said, we hope that's the case when we, when we do train and get inside. So worst case scenario, if it does become decommissioned, um, do we just lose the redundancy or? We, we lose redundancy in a million gallons of storage. Right. right? So if we're a little bit smaller, so, um, but, I, I feel pretty confident because with, with lines and things we can do with them, I think we'll be in good shape. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Kenner. Thanks again. Uh, just a quick follow-up to that. With with having two where we could, you know, kind of alternate doing maintenance, what's what's really the maintenance schedule on something like this? What, it sh what should it be instead of nine years? Nine years. Uh, you know, realistically, you know, you're inspecting your tanks uh, with an ROV or some type of equipment every three years. Uh, going inside the tank, like like an elevated tank, which is a, it's in ground, but essentially elevated because it's location in the city. About every 20 years for that, but this will give us a chance. If a sensor or something goes out or something we need to get access to, we can actually drain the tank and not have to worry. You know, what are we what are we going to do? Because that's our only our, all our pots are our, all our all our dollars are in that one tank. We'll have to have the ability to switch over to the alternate tank. Great, thank you. I'd just like to take this time publicly to thank Mr. Majeski. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, be a chaperone on um, one of my daughter's, uh, or my daughter's school field trip to, uh, to your location, and he did an outstanding job meeting the field trip and corralling. Uh, it was about uh, 35 uh, fourth graders. Thank you, and that was, uh, I will say, one of the best. But they had questions. They noticed the little, the little problems we maybe, you know, don't want people to see or like, you know, why does this look like this or why do they like that? They notice that there's some little engineers and some little lawyers and that group. <laughs> 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 so, thank you. Yeah. 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 Any other questions for Mr. Majeski? All right, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of proposed ordinance 2018 20? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this proposed ordinance 2018-20? Are there any council members wishing to speak? Call for the question. Sure. Madam Clerk, will you please pull the council? Mr. Volker? Yes. Mr. Captain? Yes. Mr. Tanner? Yes. Mr. Dio? Yes. Mr. Benaki? Yes. Mr. Adams? Yes. Mr. Kanareki? Yes. Mr. Manalenti? Yes. Proposed ordinance passes eight to zero. <coughs> Proposed ordinance number two thousand eighteen dash twenty one. Let's 
seem to happen because it's stuck to that. Good thing. An ordinance fixing the salaries of a certain elected officials of the city of Mishawaka for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2019. Thank you much. This is the second reading of proposed ordinance 2018 21. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this proposed ordinance, please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Mr. President. David Wood Mayor here to speak in support of proposed order number 2018-21 and 2018-22. Essentially the same. We're asking for raises for all of our elected officials and for our uh, public employees who are not collectively bargained for uh, as part of the collective bargaining agreement, uh, nor does this include the part-time staff members. But uh, what we're essentially asking for is a one and a half percent raise uh, by percentage for our staff members, as well as a $500 uh, cash amount that would be distributed across 26 pay, period, uh, pay periods. And then um, <clears throat> one of the things that I really wanted to get accomplished with this uh, particular year is to uh, match. We, we want our staff members to be thinking not only about uh, the here and the now and, and money in our pockets now, but uh, to prepare them for uh, eventually retirement and for their uh, fiscal health long term. And so we're asking for a 1% match of our commission <coughs> program, which is our deferred compensation. So uh, if, a, if a staff member uh, contributes 1% into that program, the city would then match that at 1%. So this is in addition, above and beyond, the perfect contribution that we already put as well. So uh, we think that's uh, uh, just, just a nice benefit for our, uh, you know, we tend to have public, our, our, our public servants tend to stay with us uh, for a long time. We think that's in their overall uh, best interests. Um, is this what we wish we could get as a raise? It's not. We wish we could do a little bit more. Um, but this takes us to the edge of our comfort level as far as what we can get. Uh, as you know, we are in a, a very tight uh, kind of fiscal cliff environment, um, and we have that, uh, and then we're also facing you know, kind of stiff competition for labor out there. Uh, we are still uh, fortunate to hire and to keep good employees in every department. Uh, we are not at a point now where we're seeing you know, a mass exodus to something uh, more uh, you know, better paid, maybe in the private sector. We're, we're not seeing that. Uh, occasionally, we will lose a staff member, but we're still able to hire, <coughs> uh, which is good. I think it says a lot. Uh, I know other uh, municipal governments that are not able to say that now, so I think that says something good about the uh, Mishawaka government. And, um, but uh, we know that, uh, you know, there, there's a lot more um, competition for good labor out there. So this uh, raise, we think, keeps us heading in the right direction. We continue to give raises each and every year. Not many municipal governments, uh, local level governments can say that as well. So uh, I don't think any questions you may have. Do you have any questions for me, Mrs. Bolton? Thank you. Um, I thank you, Mayor. I just have a question about the um, 1% Deferred comp is that in a separate account from PERF? It, it would be accounted for separately in PERF. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a program that we would make available. It's already available right now. So if any of you can take advantage of deferred compensation for it, that's what it's be. And uh, most of our, uh, several of our departments take very good advantage of this and some not so much. Uh, public safety tends to take more advantage of it, which is a good thing, but uh, um, you know, overall, we, we do need to think that it's a, it's, a, it's a good investment in our people. Thank you. Any other questions for the mayor? Mr. Kenner? Just on that same topic, thank you, Mr. President, Mayor. Is there, a, uh, is there any match right now? There is no match right now. This will be the first time we're offering a match. On this, on the 457 B specifically, yeah. continue to offer a three percent match on the per for most departments, excluding uh, police, which negotiated something different. Great, thank you. Any other questions for the mayor? 
Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of proposed ordinance 2018-21? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to proposed ordinance 2018-21? Are there any council members wishing to speak? I'll call for the question. Question. Madam Clerk, will you please pull the council? Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Captain? Oh. No, it's 21. Okay. No committee report. Okay. It's up to you. I mean, that Might as well. We'll do the committee Keep report. Going. So I got one vote. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, do the members of the uh, city common council of the city of Mishawaka, the committee on budget and finance, to whom was referred the matter of proposed ordinance number 2018-21-21 report that they have examined said matter and in that, in their opinion, it should be adopted, is assigned by the majority of the committee, and I move for its acceptance. Second. All those in favor of the committee report, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Committee report passes. So, we'll hit play. Again. When, when he put his hand up, I thought he was starting to question the ordinance. No. I got scared. <laughs> Mr. Compton. Yes. Mr. Tanner. Yes. Mr. Deal? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Kanareki? Yes. Mr. Mimolenti? Yes. Proposed ordinance passes 8 to 0. Proposed ordinance number 2018-22, an ordinance fixing the salaries of all employees of the city of Mishawaka, except Mishawaka Park Department, elected officials, and the Mishawaka Utilities for the city of Mishawaka, Indiana, for the year beginning January 1st, 2019. May I have the committee report, please? Yes, you may. Thank you. To the members of the Common Council of the City of Mishawaka, your committee on budget and finance, to whom is referred the matter of proposed ordinance number 2018-22, report that they have examined said matter and that in their opinion it should be adopted. This is signed by a majority of the committee and I move its acceptance. Second. All in favor of the committee report say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. <coughs> The second reading of proposed ordinance 2018-22. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this proposed ordinance, please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Mr. President, Council Members, uh, ditto on this one. <laughs> Any additional questions for the mayor? And this is all employees. I uh, may have uh, misspoken a little bit. This is uh, with the exception of park and, uh, and also utilities are not included. Entire police department. It's still going to pass tonight. It'll have to be in there. Right. Just so they know. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of proposed ordinance 2018-22? <clears throat> Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to proposed ordinance 2018-22? Any council members wishing to speak? Call for the question. 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 Madam Clerk, you please pull the council. Mrs. Volker? Yes. Mr. Compton? Yes. Mr. <coughs> Tanner? Yes. Mr. Deal? Yes. Mr. Benicki? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Kanarecki? Yes. Mr. Mamalenti? Yes. The post ordinance passes 8 to 0. Proposed ordinance number 2018-23. This is a, the city civil city budget for 2019 and tax levy. This does not have a committee report. It, no, it does not because this is a pre-adoption hearing with no vote, but it does need to be amended. Okay. Um, Anyone else wishing yes, Mr. Compton? Chairman, I, I move that we um, make the we, we make the necessary amendments to 2018-23. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. It has been amended. Bless you. 
So this is the second reading on proposed ordinance 2018-23. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this proposed ordinance, please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Mr. President, Council Members, State Board Mayor, I'm here to speak in support of the Civil City Budget 2019. As you may recall, that was a fiscal cliff year, and so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but uh, the bulk of this budget, uh, I'll go over some changes that uh, you know uh, take effect this year, uh, distinguish it from last year. Not a lot has changed. Uh, part of our process uh, for uh, trying to meet our fiscal cliff uh, challenges is that uh, we've really tried to budget conservative and we've really tried to set ourselves uh, out on a plan and stick to the plan. So this is part of the uh, multi-year plan. We think that uh, uh, you know, we're making good progress, uh, but there are some challenges ahead still. Uh, so uh, the biggest part of this uh, budget uh, really is the, uh, the raises, which were just uh, approved. So you know what those are. Those cover every employee or could cover every employee. The only exception, the only uh, Variant from that will be that uh, we have an IT system for position that we uh, have uh, that we have changed there, so a little bit of a discrepancy there, and so uh, we're moving uh, that salary up over the next two years. Um, one encouraging thing is that our insurance costs are stable right now. Uh, that's uh, not been the case in, in the uh, in the past. Uh, so that's uh, that's an encouraging uh, part of our budget. Uh, this year we will see uh, some pretty significant public uh, public safety capital asset purchases. Uh, we're, we've already went out to uh, order uh, with a uh, new ladder truck, which will replace Quint 3, which went down last year, could not be repaired, could not even be certified. Uh, so we have. Uh, prepared one of our points. We still have two in, in uh, we have a lot of point in service, but uh, we will be um, purchasing a brand new one, and that is a $957,000 expense. Uh, and that was, we, we had in the capital plan to buy that, uh, but you know, that's, like, that's a big expense. Um, so we're going to, uh, we have to pay that after it's built, which will be 19, and then uh, we'll be paying for that uh, through our loan, uh, our, our bond bank, I should say. Um, and then we will um, pay the payments on that through our QM cap improvement fund, which we usually try to keep as our, as our safety net. So we're going to dip into that a little bit. Um, we're also, over the fire department, we are going to be purchasing mandatory turnout. Uh, over on the police side, we have some pretty major uh, investments to make as well. Uh, we will be buying 13 new police cars. That's uh, a pretty big jump over this last year. And uh, you know, we just had one go out of service a couple weeks ago in an accident. And so we're right now, our police cars are at a premium. Right now we're buying them. Uh, we're getting the SUVs at the same price as, as the sedans, essentially. Uh, and then we're buying them with all of the gear already assembled with it. So when they come to us, they're kind of like the, um, you know, all of the things that, that we would ordinarily have to uh, install ourselves. Uh, we're also uh, replacing tasers starting this year. Uh, we're doing that through a kind of a maintenance agreement uh, that, that we're going to do. Uh, records management system, we're already about a, 1.1 million into that. Uh, we borrowed that from our bond bank. We're paying that back uh, through our public safety uh, lit fund uh, at about um, 110,000 per year. So we're and that, we're buying a lot in public safety based on the needs that we have as a community, and it's really stressing out our public safety lit. Uh, we're getting to a point where that's um, really starting to. Uh, impact our ability to make uh, decisions. Um, and then add to that PSAP. PSAP continues to increase. Uh, we continue to be very vigilant in Mishawaka and advising them. 
Some of our advice gets taken and some of it doesn't. Uh, we think that uh, we offer outstanding advice and uh, there have been many cases where if uh, the PSAP had followed our advice all along, they'd be in a better position now. Uh, but anyway, that overall bill continues to increase uh, to the city next year at $270,000. Uh, and that too is paid out of our building taxes to public safety, as well as from CD. Um One encouraging thing in our budget is that, uh, and, and part of our increase in our budget is that we're getting more money from the state, which is uh, good because we're putting that to good use. Where we're seeing increased money Funding from the state is, in particular, our um, motor vehicle highway funds and especially in community crossings. And so uh, that's having a direct uh, impact on the quality of our roads. We're able to, as you see, uh, out there in the community, you can't get anywhere from here. Uh, a lot of that is, is uh, community crossings, um, paving work that we're able to do, as well as some other work that we have going on. But uh, we have a million dollars budget, uh, budgeted for community crossings. Uh, if we're successful in uh, receiving that grant for next year, that will double to $2 million in our roads. We're essentially doubling what we used to do in the past. Um, so 700,000 of that comes from our local road and streets, and uh, 300,000 of that match comes from our motor vehicle highway. So uh, that's causing us to be more deliberate in how we spend our road paving funds, but it also kind of restricts what we do because we apply for these funds and if we get them, that's the projects we work on. Uh, and we do that a year in advance. So if a road uh, deteriorates suddenly over the winter, um, you know, we, we have to find a way to pay that uh, because we can't tap into those community crossing funds to do that. So uh, we're, striving, we're, we're really trying to to make sure that we're vigilant on our uh, asset management uh, plan for, for our roads. Uh, over on the park side, uh, we continue to invest about 250000 into uh, a featured park. Last year, we were able to complete Twin Branch Phase 2. Right now, we have budgeted to start Twin Branch Phase 3. Next year, we will go and work on another park. We typically, with these funds, we hit the parks that don't have another funding source. And so we will determine, you know, the, uh, based on uh, the most need, we'll, we'll move and, and uh, tackle another park next year. Uh, we are also budgeting for $130,000 for a new pool liner. Uh, pool liner is, gosh, probably past, way past end of life. Uh, we've patched it many, many times. Uh, we're at a point now where the pool is deteriorating to the point where, you know, we really uh, are trying to evaluate how long that's, you know, uh, going to be in existence. Um, but with our current uh, financial condition, it's going to be several years before we can probably get to that project. So we think that the investment in a liner now will add years to the service life of Maryville Pool before we decide to uh, do something different with the pool and make it a much uh, better amenity for our public. Um, over on the uh, uh, security side, uh, we're spending a lot uh, for uh, our IT, our core equipment there, uh, and the replacement. Uh, we're particularly concerned with cybersecurity needs, and so we're really focused uh, uh, from that department on, uh, on security. Uh, we uh, have plans uh, in that regard. Uh, as far as our circuit breaker, uh, it's estimated to increase to seven million dollars in a loss. Of, uh, that's in losses from an estimated uh, 5.4 million just a year ago uh, or this year. The latest projection, uh, projection is that in 2020 will be about 10.1 million dollars in circuit breaker loss. Uh, so that's how this circuit breaker is impacting us. Uh, we continue to budget conservatively. We're in a strategy now where we're trying to increase our cash balances as much as we possibly can, and we are increasing them slightly uh, every year. Um, our overall budget is $55,749,918. That's up 5.49% over this current year. Again, most of that is due to the state uh, 
you know, increases in funding that we're seeing as well as the raises uh, that are going to impact that as well. So the good news, uh, through all of our planning, through all of our multiple years of, of budget uh, um, towards one goal, is that uh, the fiscal cliff has been pushed back to 2022. So the bad news is that it is still there. And so we continue to kind of prolong uh, the ultimate, um, you know, the ultimate uh, um, impact of that, but, uh, but, but we're making good progress. Um, but originally, or if, but at some point, we're gonna probably have to look at uh, new revenue uh, or massive cuts. It's just, uh, we're getting, you know, we're, we're able to keep pushing that off, but uh, that's uh, what is ultimately gonna get us over that, unless we have, you know, growth continues to help us, which uh, growth is helping us, but uh, not near to the uh, um, extent that we'd like to see it. Uh, and so with that, that's, uh, Budget 2019 in a nutshell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Just a quick one regarding the insurance comment that you've made that it uh, maintained. Um, is that just for 2019, or did we lock in rates past that? So we're in for 2019. You know, we're kind of self-insured, so we have to uh, assess every year. Uh, we made some pretty significant changes last year, which put us in a much better. Uh, condition this year, and so I, I think we're seeing less, aren't we? As far as uh, our our use, claims, claims are down. Our claims are down from well, last year. Last year was a bad claim year. But our bad months are just, just getting ready to start when people decide, yeah, I better get that procedure or that you know that issue taken care of before at the end of the year when the deductibles run out. Uh, start controlling. It's great to learn that there is a direct correlation with the Greek limit versus the, the amount of claims that went down. We're seeing, a, we're seeing great utilization of our clinic. Uh, we're hearing great comments about it, and we know it's, it's a hard thing to measure, but we know that it is paying dividends, and we've seen some very good catches out of our clinic that might have otherwise gone out of it. So, with the allows and to speak in favor of proposed ordinance 2018-23. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to proposed ordinance 2018-23? Any council members wishing to speak? Mr. Ken. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just want to thank the one who uh, really puts a lot of effort into this, Becky. Uh, thank you so much for the preparation on this. Um, as well as all the department heads who I, I know put a lot of effort into finding ways to be creative with the funds that they do have. Uh, also recognizing that as we grow, it puts an extended strain on our public safety services. And at some point in time, whether there's a fiscal cliff or there's a, uh, a public safety cliff, if you will, uh, one of those things is gonna have to bend a little bit uh, to make sure that the city of Mishawaka is safe and secure too. So I appreciate the work that you've done and uh, the department heads and superintendents as well. I too would like to just echo Mr. Uh, Mr. Tanner's comments and also um, thank everybody in advance. I know next week we're starting, um, or this week actually, we're starting the, the budget hearings for the department as I know a lot of work has, has, has taken place in setting that up and I just want to thank our team for those that will attend uh, each night and put in their time and effort, so thanks to all. Call for a question. Question. Actually, just closing that. Oh, okay. oh, that's right. All right, so we'll move on to the privilege of the floor. This is the portion of the meeting that members of the public are invited to come forward to speak on non agenda items. Any participants? None. Unfinished business. Seeing none. New business? Mr. Rankin. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a reminder of the first district neighborhood meeting. 
be held on the 18th coming Thursday, and we'll be having so-called field trip to the 911 call center. Uh, we'll meet at St. Babel's, and then we'll be transferred over to the 911 call center. So everybody is invited, and and it should be a very interesting uh, trip and very informative. So if you know anybody that would like to come, please come. come to St. David's Church, and we'll leave from there at about 7 o'clock, and uh, over to the 911 call center. And we'll have a freshman service at the 911 call center. So, look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Deal. Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. I'd like to. A uh, reminder that our meeting in the third district will be on Wednesday the 17th, and I guess this month will be Lieutenant Beckham from the police department. And he will be giving us a narcotics presentation, uh, which should be interesting in light of uh, some of the things that we're seeing and hearing uh, that are occurring on the street. Uh, that will be at 7 p.m. at Twin Branch School, and refreshments will be served. Everyone is welcome. Thank you, Mr. Neal. Any other new business? There's no further business to come before the council, then a motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. So moved.